Return to Earth, CNN's initiative to promote a more sustainable future. Today's piece brings us to India's Western Ghats region, where the growing human population is expanding further into wildlife habitats. That's led to increased conflict with tigers, elephants, and leopards. Rolex Awards laureate Krithi Karanth is finding ways to help rural communities live alongside the wildlife. People who live in cities tend to romanticize living alongside big animals like tigers and elephants, but the reality is very, very different. For these farmers, life on the edge of India's national parks is a fight for survival. You live in constant fear of your crops being destroyed, your livestock being killed, and occasionally even being injured due to concentration of wildlife. It is not an easy life. high wildlife, high conflict country. One of the biggest challenges is the fact that we have less than 5% of land set aside for wildlife and there are millions of people who live adjacent to our protected areas or inside. Every time your crops are destroyed, you're pushed further into poverty. It becomes harder for your family to survive that year. We absolutely have to figure out ways that people and wildlife can coexist. Conservation scientist Kriti Kell has spent 15 years studying human-wildlife conflict in India, looking for ways to lessen the impact on rural communities. Research says a tiger has attacked your bull in the field. Come quickly. When we got here, we cried in despair. We earned our living with those two bulls. While the government offers compensation for losses, like damage to this bull well by elephants, Karen says it remains out of reach for many. The process to get compensation can be bureaucratic, slow, and frustrating, which is why most people don't file for compensation today. She started the Wild Sebi program in 2015 to help communities overcome those hurdles. Farmers call a toll-free number. And Karen says Wild Sebi staff respond within 48 hours, assessing the damage and helping them submit the documentation needed to make a claim. We've submitted almost 18,000 claims. People have received almost $800,000 in compensation from the government. Her work also helps protect animals from those pushed to the limit. We've had families who've called us 50, 60 times, and they rarely retaliate. They retaliate when a sense of frustration builds, and they don't get the help they need in time. Finding new ways for people and wildlife to coexist has become more urgent in the face of a global pandemic. Last year, Karen and her team started teaching communities how to protect themselves from zoonotic disease. I think the pandemic is a deep wake-up call for every human on the planet. It shows that you can't endlessly tinker with nature. We need to do more to save wildlife and wild places. Karen's passion for wildlife began at a young age. I had the most amazing childhood. My dad is a tiger conservationist and biologist, so I'd seen my first tiger and leopard by the time I was two years old. She hopes to share that passion with the next generation through her education program, which she says has reached over 20,000 children. To me, they are the stewards of the environment. If we don't get them to understand the value of this, we're going to lose the wildlife. I have two daughters. What I hope I can do is move the needle a little bit in how people and wildlife learn to coexist.